Next up, we like to classify all of these molecules as polar or nonpolar. So we have H2CO, we begin by counting our valence electrons. 2 plus 4 plus 6, giving us 12. We previously found this molecule in a question, but we already know what it should look like. Just double check that um, it's correct, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And all of our formal charges on oxygen is going to be 6 minus 6, 0. Carbon is going to be 4 minus 4, 0. Hydrogen is going to be 1 minus 1, 0. So everything checks out for this list structure. Next up, we go about finding its steric number. And carbon has three groups attached to it, so it's going to be three. They're all bonding pairs. And so its notation will be AX3. Next up, you just pull up your chart. Total domains are three. We have three bonding pairs and no lone pair. So this is going to be trigonal planar and it's E electronic geometry and it's molecular geometry. And so let's just draw that out. And then to determine if it's polar or nonpolar, let's draw our dipoles. And so oxygen is more electronegative, um, carbon is more electronegative, carbon is more electronegative. These two will cancel, but not completely, to form one pointing up. And they'll be the one pointing up towards the oxygen. These two cannot cancel, and so it's going to be a non-zero dipole moment, telling us that this molecule is polar. Next up, we have CH3OH. Countervalence electrons, we have 4 plus 4 plus 6, giving us 14 electrons. We may begin with the three hydrogens and the carbon, attach the oxygen, and attach the last hydrogen. And so um, now we fill in all of our octets and double check all of our electrons. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Perfect. They all work out. Let's double check on our formal charge on the carbon, it is going to be 4 minus 4, 0. On the hydrogens, all of them, it's going to be 1 minus 1, 0. And on the oxygen, it is going to be 6 minus 4 minus 2, 0. And so the formal charges all make sense. This is our correct Lewis structure. Now let's go about figuring out the steric number around carbon. And we also need to figure out the steric number around the oxygen. And so around carbon, it has four groups attached to it. So it'll have a steric number of four. None of them are lone pairs. So that is going to be AX4. On the oxygen, we again have four groups attached to it, but two of them are lone pairs. So we have a steric number of four as well, but the notation will be AX2E2 to tell you two bonding pairs, two lone pairs. And so now if you go to our Vesper chart, around the carbon, we have four total domains, which we've determined and none of them are lone pairs. And so it's going to be tetrahedral. So let's first draw the groups around our carbon. And then we can go about drawing the tetrahedral nature of our oxygen. And so that one is going to be AX2E2 we've determined. And so it will have one pointing towards the side and one pointing up. And then you will have your two groups on it. So it looks a bit bent. And our draw in our drawing we can just decide to ignore those two lone pairs and simply leave it like this. And so we know the, we can now begin to draw out our dipoles to determine whether it's polar or nonpolar. On everything. Okay. And so we know these two will add up to just form one vector pointing up. All represents the difference in electronegativity between carbon and hydrogen. 
There's also one vector pointing out to represent the difference in electronegativity between oxygen and carbon. Next up, we have a vector pointing in this way to represent the difference in electronegativity between oxygen and hydrogen. And last up, we have additional vectors pointing in two directions to represent the difference in electronegativity between oxygen and the electron. So its magnitude will be different from this one. And so obviously these will not cancel. They're non-equal and there's nothing canceling out the ones that are equal um, in terms of them being opposite. And so this will be a non-zero dipole moment, which means that CH3OH is going to be a polar molecule. And just a quick note, yeah, it's just going to be polar in its entirety. If for whatever reason, this reason, uh, sorry, this region, the net dipole did cancel, but this region it did not, then it would be partially polar and partially nonpolar, but that's not the case. Next up, we have CH2Cl2, which we also did previously. So recall to get a... Um, sorry, a uh, general idea of what it should look like, just replace the halogens with hydrogens and it becomes CH4. We know that CH4 would look like this. And then we just replace two chlorines, um, sorry, two hydrogens with chlorines. Now, depending on which one you pick, you will have different molecules. And so if we decide to replace these two with chlorines, we'll get this. If we instead decide to replace these two, we get this. And if we instead decide to replace these two, we get this. Now, I've already draw drawn it, um, how it should technically look in terms of the trigonal planar. Um, notion, if you want to get there on your own, you just need to notice the steric numbers on each of the carbons. Each carbon has three groups attached to it, so they will both be AX3, steric number of three, and none of them are lone pairs. And so when you go to the Vesper chart, AX3, three bonded atoms, zero not lone pairs, and so it's going to be trigonal planar. And you can see that this side is trigonal planar, and this side is also trigonal planar, so the two add up to look like that. Sorry, let's put our valence electrons on the chlorines. Okay, and then now that we have the geometry, let's go about the dipole. So we have a dipole pointing that way. Okay, and then let's now double check if anything cancels. And so here they cancel in terms of um, horizontally, but vertically they don't. And so you're left with just one vector pointing upwards. Here again, they cancel in terms of horizontally, but vertically they don't. And so it also leaves you with a vector pointing upwards. These two obviously cannot cancel, so we'll have a non-zero dipole moment here. And so this version of CH2Cl2 is polar because all of these three structures are allowed. Next up, let's see if these two cancel um, vertically, sorry, horizontally they do, vertically, sorry, vertically they do, horizontally they do not. And so left with a vector pointing right, same thing here, we'll be left with a vector pointing right, these two cannot cancel, and so we'll have a non-zero dipole moment, so it'll be polar. Here, these two do cancel, they're equal and they're opposite, so they cancel, these two are also equal and opposite, so they cancel. And so we will have a zero dipole moment, and this one will be non-polar. And so depending on which of these three um, versions you have of CH2Cl2, you'll get a different answer for whether it's polar or non-polar. But if you're asked, to draw them all out and label each individual one as polar or non-polar. Lastly, we have CO2. We can count our valence electrons. We'll have... 4 plus 12 yielding 16 electrons to take care of. 
Carbon as our essential, oxygen and oxygen. If we fill in everybody's octet, we will have 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So obviously we have too many electrons. We know carbon likes to make four bonds and each of the oxygens like to make two bonds. And so we can go ahead and just give everybody what they want and see if the valence electrons make sense that way. Now we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Our valence electrons all make sense. Let's double check on our formal charge. On the oxygens, we'll have 6 minus 4 minus 2, giving us 0. And on the carbons, we'll have 4 minus 0 minus 4, giving us 0. And so both of our formal charges make sense. Our valence electrons make sense. So this is obviously the correct structure. Now let's count the steric number. The steric number is there are only two groups attached, so it's going to be 2. And the notation will be AX2 since we have no lone pairs and two bonding pairs. Go check the chart. Um, steric number of 2, two bonded atoms, zero lone pairs, and so it's going to be linear. Next up, let's go about drawing our dipoles. And so we'll have two equal and opposite dipoles pointing towards the oxygens. Obviously, they will cancel. Um, and so we'll have a zero dipole moment, meaning that this molecule will be non-polar. And that's it for this question.